Hey guys, how's it going and uh, welcome back. Uh, for those who don't know, there's about uh, six videos already on this machine and uh, it's in our playlist on my channel. So we are to the point where we're trying to get the body to look uh, much more presentable than what it is with that lovely white chalky, I don't know what you want to call it, haze that's uh, on the fiberglass and we're going to try to bring the luster back up into shape. Last video we did a bunch of fiberglass work. All well, the fiberglass seems to be fine. We fiberglass where the gas tank was with some resin. Patched a couple holes in the body and wrapped the exhaust. Seems like uh, quite a few people were writing, why don't you uh, just put hose clamps. When I wrapped the exhaust, I used uh, band clamp, um, I don't know what you want to call them, stainless steel tie wraps, we're going to call them. Uh, on the exhaust, I wanted to try and uh, use those and play with them and get a little uh, education how they work. And uh, so that was done on this project. And a bunch of people, why don't you see, you just use hose clamps? Why don't you use mechanics wire? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? The reason why is because I wanted to try and use those clamps and see how they work because I have a another motorcycle that uh, the Jawa, which I want to wrap the exhaust on and I want to get an education how those things worked. So I figured I would take you guys along with me and see how they would uh, function. And uh, I struggle through them, but uh, you know we got them on there. I ordered a correct tool for uh, crimping them, and uh, so in the future, hopefully it gets a little neater uh, to use. And for instance, here in my drawer is a pack of about a hundred of them that I grabbed. So that's why I did not use hose clamps or mechanics wire. I have a. Uh, done that before on other projects uh, you guys have ever followed any of the custom uh, bike builds I've done I've used a ton of that tying things up but that's why anyway let's move forward with trying to make this thing a little bit more purdy uh, than what she is so at the end of the last video I just took a little bit of thousand grit then two thousand grit and kind of just went over this area fairly quickly to see how the haze is gonna go get dropped or knocked off and it did fairly well Again, that's just sandpaper. There's no buffing or anything done to that. But I want to do the rest of the body. So I think what we want to do is try to remove whatever, what, uh, I don't know what you want to call them, accoutrements that are hanging off of it that need to be replaced anyway and not have to work around them. So we're going to get the lights off. We'll get the handle out of the way. We'll get the, the horn protector grill off of there and whatever else we can find. We can take the gas cap assembly back off again. Tail light has to come off. We have a new one anyhow. That bezel may come out of there. Those kind of things, that handle. So we'll take some of that stuff out of our way, get it stripped down, and then we'll start to get it wet sanded. As far as the stripe, I'm not quite sure what we're gonna do. It's, I believe the original one that was on there, this one looks like it was put on maybe on a Monday or a Friday because she's not exactly straight. <laughs> Other side's okay. This one's a little uh, kitty wampus. So maybe we'll cover that with a piece of tape or something. So that when we're wet sanding it, we just don't turn it into a white piece of uh, plastic stuck to the body. And that one's a little bit better. All right, enough talking. Let me get some of this hardware off of here and we'll see what we can do. So I'm getting all the hardware off. It's pretty much stripped already. I was getting the rear motor mount out. And I figured I got the nut and bolts here and I put a wrench on the front and a wrench on the back. And I am just wrenching on the nut on the back. Wrenching on something. Man, those suckers are tight. I forgot I welded nuts on the back. <laughs> They're not going anywhere. And a little pile of parts real quick. We got it knocked down as much as I want to. Uh, I could try to get a couple other things out, but I'm afraid I'm going to break them like that black button, which I think is the horn button. I'm not sure. Uh, pull the molding away from the dash, except for where the rear is because it's pinched in there and I don't want to fight getting that back in. Everything else is pretty clear. I figure I'm going to concentrate on the upper section first. We'll see how that kind of comes out before we delve into the beaver's lower end. <laughs> so we got to get some sandpaper, wet sandpaper, and some water. We got a jug set up. So we'll give ourselves a little bit of, a little bit of Dawn just to kind of give it some staying power. The water just doesn't run right off. We'll let them soak for 10 minutes or so, and uh, more than likely we're going to just hold a sponge up above and kind of let it run down. As far as the that, I think I'm going to leave them well enough alone and just try to do my best to work around them. I don't know how that's going to 
come out. If it gets really bad, we're just going to rip them right off. Unfortunately, what's going to probably happen is it'll be a different color than what the rest of it is. It depends on how long it's been on there. These guys have nuts on the other side of them. And my arms are just not long enough to go all the way around and hold that side of it while I'm trying to do that side of it. So I'm going to work around that too. So without further ado, let me get some, uh, my hands wet in the beaver. And just a whole lot of that. So I sanded the whole top half with, I ended up going down to 320. I want to see if that's enough to cut all that white haziness off of it. Or do I need to go even further past that? So let's wipe the water off of that. Let that set up for a minute, air dry, and see what it looks like. Have about a minute to get the fan blowing on it. I think that should do it. Wherever, you know, if you look at the parts of it where it's dry and it's just got that white powdery stuff all over it, so it dries and it's kind of hard to tell. But if you wipe it off, it's it's there, but it's not um, it's not that. <laughs> so I'm gonna go. All right, I'm gonna go kick it with uh, 600, a uh, thousand, and 2,000. And I just got done with 2,000 grit, and then. Wiped it down with water and the sponge and then came back with a paper towel. So it's looking, looking a lot better than the bottom, doesn't it? So it's about 10, 10.30 at night. I think we're going to go wrap it up for tonight. And tomorrow, I think uh, we may go hit it with uh, some rubbing compound and see how the top is going to come back. And uh, we still have to do the rest of it, of course. But I want to jump forward and see what, <laughs> see what it's actually going to look like. But not bad. Worst case, you can just clear it too, you know, but I think we'll be able to buff it to be able to buff the beaver back to its original glory. It's got a tramp stamp now. All right, till tomorrow. Hey guys, it's actually a couple days later. I got had some other projects to deal with and this is all dried up. So basically what you're seeing on top is what it actually is it's not like when you wet it and it looks good for a minute till it dries off so it's already decent figure we'll get the buffer out we'll throw some uh, uh compound on it and see if it will come back maybe we'll even try a little bit on the bottom and see if it's not necessary to go through all those steps i have a feeling it is going to be but uh, we'll give her a shot and uh again sorry for the background noise there is a well getting drilled next door so we're going to hear some uh, other engines besides the ones that are normally running in my garage let's see how this works out for us i'm gonna go Missed a little bit of moisture on it. Just some soapy water to kind of help cut it. I'm gonna go with uh, 3M. Perfect it 3000. Throw some of that on the buffer. Mush it around and see what it does. I'm definitely a novice on this, but. That's the fun in life, trying things that you haven't done much of, or, you know. I don't want it with a little too much water. My rip them's down a little. That's all the way down, so that's what we're working with.
That looks pretty good. It's, uh... Let's wipe off what we did and didn't do, see if there's a big difference. See here is not done. I think it's gonna look just fine. Well you say we uh try a little on the bum there and see if it, it'll cut right through this stuff. I have a feeling it's not going to, but I would rather not spend the next two hours. You might get away with it. Look what I might do, I'm gonna go around, I'm just gonna clean off any of the extra, you know, dribbles that are from the top stuff and give her a shot. Now I ran around and uh, quickly uh, wet sanded the bottom of them. Didn't go crazy like I did on the top, but uh, I have a feeling it's gonna come out the same either way. So I'm gonna go take some time, go buff that whole thing out and see what we got. And that's the aftermath. It's decent. But it definitely has a bunch of uh, hazing and cracking in it and unfortunately when you run the compound over it it kind of goes into all the little pores to see if the camera's going to pick it up you see me that's a good sign <laughs> maybe not but you know it definitely uh did a bunch of that uh someone recommended and i've done it in the past too that you, you can get a wax that's colored and try to fill it in with a uh like a pigment pigmented wax and see if they kind of help cover it. Unfortunately a lot of those are probably already filled with the compound. There's not too much of a, a way around that. Six feet away looks fine though. And again I'm not I'm not trying to make the thing look new I'm just trying to clean it up as best as possible. I want to be able to use the thing and if I you know bump and bruise it not uh, flip out you know. As you can see it's definitely got some uh, battle scars. But a definite improvement of what it was. The inside I just kind of wiped out with a wet sponge for now. It's all chalky. We'll deal with that on its own. I kind of want to get all the bits and pieces back on it. So let's get set up. I want to take some Kelsey's Bleach White, which is used for white wall tires. And I want to see if we can kind of clean up maybe some of this stuff, if possible. And then we'll go over with a wax. I was calling it Kelsey's. It's the Wesley's. Let's try putting it on a rag. I, don't, I have a feeling it'll probably eat the, the wax off. Well, let's see if this will do anything for us. <laughs> Doesn't appear to. for a second. I wonder if we could, uh, maybe we should try a scotch bright with it. Something with a little bit of tooth, you know. Let's go try that. Let's go try a scotch bright. Yeah, let's give that a shot. It'll probably work just by itself, kind of like a sandpaper. Hopefully it doesn't turn green. <laughs> Mold it. Seems to help a little. You think go all the way around with that? Give it a shot. I'd say that probably improved it by about 80%. That's decent, kind of matches the, the same beat upness the body is. So I'm gonna go run, grab lunch, and I think I'm gonna go try to stop by the auto parts store and see if I can find some uh, 
wax that has a orange tint to it. If there's not, they will just go with the regular setup. Yeah, I went shopping, but uh, they didn't have any of the colored stuff, so I'm just gonna go with the regular paste wax and give it a once before, and then we can start putting all the pieces back on. All done. Probably doesn't look any different in the pictures, but uh, definitely much better. Kind of knocked down some of that white haziness. It's still there, but it's not terrible. So I just have to do the seats. I kind of wipe them down. I'm gonna wipe them down with water one more time, and then I'll hit them with some wax. <laughs> Make it really hard to drive, slip right out of there. It's supposed to have seat covers, but uh, I do not have them. You want to see a uh, before and after? I got the cover. The cover hasn't been. Uh... Hold on. Hold on. I would have planned for this. All right. That's a before and after. Don't know what I want to do about the chunk that's broken out of it, unfortunately. I'm going to try to reconstruct that and blow some paint in there or, or what the deal is with that. Yeah, we'll worry about that another time. Definitely looking sharper though. You can see how much it faded. The red. Where it was red, now it's orange. I, I put a rag in the gas tank to try to help catch any crap that went inside there. You probably can't see a damn thing, can you? I'm gonna pull that out of there, blow some of that crap out and just start reassembling it, get her ready to rock and roll. Tires need to be uh, detailed, but I'll probably take them off and do them. All right, so I figured uh, we got a bunch of the chrome shiny pieces back on, but I wanna get to installing some of the hardware in the back before I put the taillight on so I'm not leaning over the top of it and taking that out of commission. I just went and grabbed a piece of hose for the bilge pump and a through hull fitting. There she goes. That, that's what happens when you wax it. <laughs> and a through hole fitting that we could put on the side. I'm thinking we could probably come right about here. This part's all gas tank, but I'm thinking maybe right about this area and we can kind of see when it is puking water out. And as far as where the pump can locate, the lowest part would be all the way down underneath the dry shaft, uh, the axle rather, down here. But I think we're going to be a little bit forward of that right in this area. Should be good. Uh, not quite sure how I want to attach it to the floor. We may just try with some maybe epoxy or something or uh, like a silicone and just kind of stick the... Uh, let's grab it. So that, that red section comes right off and the idea was you ran a couple of screws through those holes and then you can, you can click the top back onto it. But I have a feeling we're just going to glue that part of it down. Let's go drill a hole in the boat. And I'm going to go drill a pilot hole from the inside to make sure that I clear the gas tank. I'm going to try for it right about, right about there. Let's see how good my guesstimation is. Candy. All right, so now we got to make it so that that fitting, wherever it ended up, we got to make that with a hole saw. All right, so we're going to go with that one. We got to line it up so that the pins. And I'm going to run it in. What do you think? Put tape over it? I don't think it'll be. I don't think it should be an issue. What do we got for battery? 
three bars. Just keep our rip ums down. Let's go with low gear. Think it's the right size? Hope so. I didn't go any bigger. Alright, we'll get the nut on the back of that and uh, attach the hose. Probably should have came down about three quarters of an inch. Oh well. We'll know what to do on the next one, right? I think we can screw that pump a little bit. This is the cover removed from it and what it has is a float on the inside and you're able to, to kind of test it by lifting the float and, and just making sure that it still functions. But it has three wires coming out of it and of course it came with no instructions. So that one says it's hot. I figure the black one's going to be ground. The third one I, I think you, what you probably do is you just hook it up to a switch maybe it bypasses the float. I just want to make sure of that so let's get into it and throw a little bit of power on some stuff. See what does what. Let's jump her pack on. Yeah. That's the float up. And right, so that one that one would be hooked to a switch. Let's see if the float works on this one. Yeah, that's the way it's set up. So this one would just get direct to power all the time. If it gets water on, it's going to turn itself on automatically. And this is the one if you want to hook it to a switch, you can fire it. Yeah, so I'm thinking, I took a, a I wiped down the, the area down there, now it's dark. And then I hit it with a heat gun to kind of dry up whatever. I'm thinking probably right about there would be our best bet. The most out of the way. About as low as we can get it. But I'm thinking how to attach it. Again, we could either you know, goop up the bottom with it. But I have some like 3M two-sided tape. I mean, I'm thinking we'll give that a shot. We'll go line the bottom of that red and then we'll stick it on there. See how well it sticks. Worst case, we just go back and uh, try something else. But... I'd like to try that first. It seems like it has a, a loss of stickiness, so I'm gonna go pop it in the microwave for about a, about a minute, see if that'll help loosen up and uh, re-stickify the glue. All right, we'll go with that. I think it'll work. Well, depends on how oily the bottom of that is. Maybe we'll take a trial run. We'll take a piece of scrap first and see how it'll stick to that. Pretty good. I'm going to try washing that a little bit better, see if we can get rid of some of, a little bit more of the contaminants and hit it up with a heat gun. Give us our best shot, you know. Yeah, hit it with some uh, glass clean, cleaner and a scotch brite. Let's go pop that on there. Yeah. Got to make sure we can get our fingers around it to get it unlatched. 
Maybe we're sales about an inch for them. Go for it. I think the problem is the surface isn't very flat though. As long as it stays. That might be a dud. <laughs> Let's try it. More right there. I yeah, see it's rocking on it. Probably should have checked that first, shouldn't I? Yeah. Dud. We gotta come up with something else. We're gonna go try some uh, right stuff. It's a gasket maker. But it, it stays kind of pliable. And that's what I want. Should probably not cover all the areas that water is supposed to go in. So we'll let that kind of goo to the bottom and let it set up probably overnight would be our best bet. Yeah, pop the hose off it so it's not trying to twist it and just kind of into the floor. And hopefully there's enough tooth on both of them. So we'll some Tomorrow we'll take a look at that, and that should be okay. If not, we'll go get some liquid nails or something. <laughs> Eventually, we're going to drill holes right through the <laughs> through it, and we'll nut and bolt it if we have to. Well, leave that be. What we got is a couple of VW reverse lights, which are like almost identical to what was on the front. And what, what was on the front was about totally beat. So let's go throw these on there and see how they look. That's a little better, huh? Other than that, no, they, they are definitely close enough to, uh, you didn't know, you wouldn't know, you know? Alright, just because I want to, I'm going to put that on there just to see how it, uh, it looks, make me feel good. <laughs> but the hole's too small in the center. The wires. Let's see, Let's see if that'll do it. Oh yeah. I want to take our nuts off first. Huh? This has a brake slash taillight setup, and the original was only a uh, taillight. I don't know if I want to bother trying to make a brake light. Get it. Tramp stand. Like a big eyeball. So I think I am kind of slowing down for the evening. I'll let that seal it draw, uh, dry up on the pump. See how that does tomorrow. Probably just going to pull this right back off. But I just want to step back and look at it. You know what I mean. Like you guys don't do it. Jump ahead a little. Alright. So we have wiring under the dash to do wire up the lights. Figure out how I'm going to do that. Ignition switch, I got a solder, a diode to the uh, power coming off of the, the alternator. Guess we're going with that. We still have to put together that bottom section too where the, uh, the tow hook goes. This could be our thumbnail. Looking good, I like it. The imperfections on the body are not uh, bothering me as much anymore. I'm surprised the decals uh, held up too. I wet sanded pretty much right over the top of them. You know, I didn't, wasn't aiming for them, but I was hitting them. Other than the fact that it's got a little bit of a jog to it. All right. 
All right, so with that, guys, uh, again, every video, I, I hope to get further along than what I did and uh, get the thing back on the ground and running, but it all takes time. We gotta get that stuff corrected. So I'll probably put all that on one video and then we should be able to fire it up and go. Looks good. Yeesh. What a difference, huh?